All right, so here we are at Warrior Run Local Works and Raceway in Nanticoke, Pennsylvania. There's Clem, he's the owner. Here's his large, he's got a really large selection of Carrera stuff, and he's got a large Carrera track, but it's a hybrid track. The outer two lanes are digital and analog, and the inner two lanes are only analog. But for the uh, for today's purposes, I just wanted to do a little video explaining the new lap counter. Uh, he has the lap counter mounted here, so uh, we'll do a little video explaining how to program. Here we have a new lap counter that works with the control unit. Okay, the lap counter programs the same way as the previous lap counter. What you do is you first you select if you want a, a, a lap race or a timed race. So let's you can push the button, you push the change button, and that changes it from time race to training to lap race. Let's select a lap race. Now, if you want to select a higher number, you push the button that says up, and that goes up through the digits. Each digit, as it's flashing, that's the one you select. So we're going to select a 10 lap race here, and so pushing the select button moves it over one one digit. And if you want to go up, then you see you got 30, 40, 50. 60 we'll just do a 10 just because we're only showing the video only we're showing how to use it here you select it select it select it again now this is what's different with the new lap counter now you have two options f1 mode or slot mode in f1 mode all the racers once the racers once the race starts you drive around the track once the leader crosses the line then the lap counter stops counting laps of all the cars on the track and what, however many laps you finish are the number of laps that you end up with. In slot race mode, SLO, it's abbreviated there, you have the, uh, the other option is the racers uh, drive around the track. Once the leader crosses the line, everybody gets to finish the laps, their total number of laps. So if it's a 10 lap race, then every racer will finish with 10 laps, but the leader obviously will still win. So let's uh, select Formula One mode. Now, once you push that, then it starts flashing. Once it starts flashing like that, that means it's ready to go. So then we've selected lap race. Now all we do is we press the start button. Start button once to get it ready. Lights count up. Now you see the lap counter engaged. Now what happens is the car is driving around the track. It'll take a minute for the car to get back around. We only have one car programmed. That car is number four, uh, car ID number four. It is in the first uh, position. We have uh, nine laps left. You see now it's counting down number of laps. You see the best lap time, you see the last lap time, and so far the total duration of the race. And you see position one, uh, uh, P1 on the track is car ID number four. That's what the number four is where it says position. So you keep driving around, eventually the race finishes. Okay, once it flashes like that, now you know that the race is over. Duration of the race was 10 laps. The uh, car shown in position one was the leader here, which was car ID four. Total elapsed time of the race, best lap time, and the last lap time are all shown. Uh, if you were to have a position tower and a driver's display on the track as well, as well as a start light, uh, all of those would flash after the race is over, just to give you an indication that the race is over.